Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a lore video for you guys, and this one is a top five good and honorable things that Tommy Versetti has done. Now Tommy Versetti, he isn't as much of a moral character as CJ. He has done some pretty bad things, but he has also kept his word and helped out friends at times. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. And what also pushed me to make this video was that tragically, Ray Liotta had passed away in May. And Ray Liotta, he was the voice behind Tommy Versetti, and he was an amazing actor, and it's just really sad that he's gone. And so I wanted to make a video dedicated to his character. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Top 5 good and honorable things that Tommy Versetti did. Starting off at number 5, we have Saving Phil Cassidy. So Phil Cassidy, he's a recurring character in several GTA games, including Vice City Stories, Vice City, GTA 3, and Liberty City Stories. Phil Cassidy is a man who runs a boomshine operation in Vice City and a black market for guns. Later, he expands his black market to Liberty City. Tommy first comes in contact with him when he finds out that he would be a great gunman for the bank heist from Cam Jones. Well, the best shooter in this town is a guy named Cassidy. Is that so? Yeah, a military guy, or thinks he is. I doubt he was ever in the army, but he certainly knows how to get a hold of guns. He'll be down at the shooting range. Tommy goes on over to the gun range and proves himself to Phil Cassidy, which this earns his respect, and he agrees to back Tommy up on the bank job. You Phil Cassidy? Why? I'm looking for a man who can handle a gun. On this setup, I'm not too convinced. Son! I can shoot a fly off your head at 80 feet! Oh, really? Yeah, I learned it in the Army. Fly shooting real popular in the Army? Glad I don't pay tax. You trying to be funny, kid? <laughs> That's shoot! So they all escape from the bank. The only thing is that goes wrong is that Hillary unfortunately dies during the heist, but afterwards, Phil will actually call Tommy and tell him that he respects him a lot for the bank job and tells him to come on over uh, to his compound. I'm late. Tommy, I really enjoyed working with you. Ain't had so much fun since the region numb, pal. Anyhow, if you need anything, you call on me, you hear? I always remember those I served with. And I'm sure I can help you out. You hear? Tommy pays Phil a visit at his compound and helps him get rid of some competition in exchange for help from Phil's gun running business. It's a good whip for set you off. Ah, Listen, Phil, you said you could fix me up with some firepower. Sure thing. There's some Mexican gun runner been doing me for business of late. He does his weekly run about now. <clears throat> hey. Ram his hardware off the back of his trucks before he goes to ground. And you'd be doing me a favor while you're at it. Then finish him off. So once Tommy takes care of everything, Phil has no more competition. He invites Tommy on over to celebrate. And this is where everything goes wrong. So he wants to show Tommy some of his Boomshine, which Boomshine is basically a parody off of Moonshine. But the only difference is it's an explosive form of alcohol. Very dangerous. Tommy, it's Phil. Now cut out all the reminiscent crap and listen to you here. Good. I got me some extra shrink boonshine during fermentation time and I was wondering if you get fancy having a shot. Seriously, Tommy. If you like a drink, or if you need to strip paint, this stuff will make a man out of you. Sure did out of me, even though I can't see out of one eye. I'll be waiting for you. You hear? Phil changes the batteries in his um, remote and he does a really stupid thing. This bitch you locked! I swear you should lay off that boom shine, man. It smells like paint stripper. It's make my eyes burn. Shh, 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 Tommy. Hey, come over here because there's something I want to show you. Something. Oof, God, should I be able to smell that from way over here? Don't boozy. you worry about the smell, oof. Tommy. You just watch this. <sighs> Shitty, cheap, bad bitch or something. There's some more on the bench. Ta-da! Oh, damn! <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. Phil lost his arm here. So this is this is how Phil doesn't have an arm. He doesn't have an arm in Liberty City Stories GTA 3 because of this reason. This is how he lost his arm. He lied to Claude when he tells him that he lost his arm in Nicaragua. Hey, if I teamed up with you in Nicaragua, maybe I'd still have my arm. If you need any firepower, just drop by and take what you need from the lockers. Leave the cash under the bench. Now, I know some people are going to say the only reason Tommy saved Phil was for access to his gun business, but you have to note at this time, Tommy had most of his criminal empire already completed, or he was in the process of finishing building it up. It was just a gut reaction to save Phil. And Phil, he does say some funny lines while Tommy's driving him to the hospital. Watch out! Charlie in the tree line! Broke his spoon. Your mother in here. You got me. Not the hospital, man. Too many cops in Viet Cong. There's an ex-army surgeon who owes me a few favors. And a lot more. He's got a place down in Little Havana. Oh, look, a giant fish. Spoon, run. Woo, woo. After the mission, Phil will actually call Tommy thanking him for saving his life, and he'll say one final funny thing. Tommy, it's Phil. I want to thank you for helping me out back there, son. Damn Charlie, he'll always ambush you somewhere or the other. Anyway, the wound is healing well, and it means I'll no longer be defrauding the government on my disability check. Next at number 4, we have helping Colonel Cortez escape the French assassins. So early on in the game, Tommy meets Colonel Cortez at his yacht party. Colonel Cortez is a colonel from an unknown Central American country. He helps set up the deal between the Ferrellis and the Vance brothers. He then feels responsible to help Tommy after it goes wrong, and tells Tommy where to find Gonzalez. Gonzalez is the guy who gave information to Diaz, which caused Do Tommy's deal to be robbed. He also does suggest to Tommy later on that Diaz was involved in attacking his deal. Diaz was pleased and would like to meet you again. Is that a good thing? Of course, although I'm starting to think that Diaz was responsible for our unfortunate loss. What makes you say that? One does not wave accusations at a man like Diaz. I'm merely thinking out loud. No matter. I have a proposal that you could profit. I don't have time to run more errands, Cortez. I would have thought a man with such dangerous dates would be hungry for opportunities. Please, Tommy, at least hear me out. Go on. Additionally, throughout the story, Tommy goes and retrieves some missile guidance chips from a French courier at a shopping mall, but this gets ambushed by the French Special Forces. The French courier tries to make a run for it, and Tommy kills him, bringing back the missile guidance chips to Colonel Cortez. Now, this is more of an honorable act instead of a good act, because Colonel Cortez isn't a good man himself. However, Tommy, he has no obligation to help him, but he still comes on over to help him, because Colonel Cortez did give him information on Gonzalez, and also did tell him that Diaz was most likely involved in the deal. Colonel Cortez does call Tommy and begs him to help, telling him that the French assassins are after him. Tommy. The message, Cortez. Look, the French are giving me all kinds of trouble, amigo. They're hypocrites. They spend a hundred years stealing from poor countries, and they call me a thief. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to need your help as soon as possible, amigo. So please hurry. Huh? Tell me I need you, all right? Circumstances force a hasty departure, amigo. What's the problem? Ah, the French want their missile technology back, and after that last incident, I feel it is time to find safer homes. Wouldn't it be safer to fly? I'd be dead before I reach check-in. Besides, I need to get my merchandise out of the country. Need another gun? You, my friend, are worth ten guns. <laughs> Now, when the French um, special forces and assassins arrive, they have no plans in arresting Cortez or his crew. They're going to kill everyone. Cortez even says he would be dead before he would reach check-in. If they aren't planning on killing him, then why do they bring in an attack helicopter? It gets really crazy. These guys take a bunch of boats. They try to board the yacht. Tommy does stop them, and then he also clears a path and helps Colonel Cortez escape, to which Colonel Cortez thanks him, and we see one of the best cutscenes in the game.
Tomas, you have protected and served me well. And now you must leave us before we reach the open seas. I will lower my personal launch. Keep it, my friend. A token of my gratitude. Thank you, Kern. Uh, one more request. While I'm away, could you keep an eye on Mercedes for me? I think she could look after herself, but sure, I'll keep an eye out. Gracias, amigo. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo. I can change your... Moving on to number three, we have saving Lance Vance. Tommy first meets Lance Vance when he arrives to Vice City for the drug deal, but they never get the chance to interact because Lance was in the helicopter, and as we know, it ends horribly. He then finally gets to talk to Lance after he kills Leo Teal, one of the assassins who ambushed his deal. Oh, way to go, tough guy. Beat him to a pulp. That should make him real chatty. You want some too? Hey, chill. I want what you want, brother. Oh, yeah? And what's that? Your green and my dead brother's white lady. Unfortunately, you just silenced our lead. Accidents happen. Get lost. Hey, hey, whoa. Well, no need to go all long range on my ass. The way I see it, we two hombres in a strange town. We need to watch each other's back. My back's just fine, brother. You sure about that? Yeah, take this. Follow me. Lance later arrives and backs Tommy up on a deal in which he was sent by Colonel Cortez to help Diaz out. Hogging all the action, I see. Look, you want to do something other than just shadowing me everywhere? Why don't you come along and show me if you're any use? I might just do that. The name's Lance, by the way. Tommy Versetti. Let's go. Tommy also meets Lance at Diaz's house, and he warns Lance to wait and not go after Diaz. Lance is very well aware of his plan, but he doesn't want to listen to Tommy. What do you think you're doing? What are you doing here? Hey, I've been asking around. It's obvious that Diaz jumped the deal and iced my brother. And he'll kill you too. I can take Diaz. No, listen to me. I'll handle Diaz. He's beginning to trust me. Yo, Tommy, it's Lance. Yeah? Oh, nice to hear from you, Lance. Come on, man, be cool, be cool. I'm in the middle of something. What do you want? Nothing. Just to say, you know, look, Tommy, we can do this thing, you and me, no problem. You know what I mean. We're going to have to do it, because otherwise we're going to be dead, Lance. We're in too far now. But thanks for the call. I'll speak to you later. This leads to Kent Paul telling Tommy that Lance has been kidnapped after he tried to attack one of Diaz's businesses. I'm El China. Paul, I might have a little result for you, but I need to speak to you in person. I'm enjoying a little r and at the Club Malibu. I reckon you're going to owe me a favor or two after this, Sunshine. I'll see you later. All right, Mus. I'm going to save your Vera, mate. What the hell are you talking about? You know that wanker Diaz, the Bugelmeister? He's got your boy Lugs. Word is, you might try to jump. You didn't jump high enough, if you know what I mean. Where did he take them? Ah! ah. Oh, all in right, plain mate. English. Keep your barney on. You caught him across town in the junkyard. <laughs> Bloody hell, you nutter! At this point, Tommy races across town to the scrapyard and fights his way through a number of Diaz's goons to save Lance. This is also one of the hardest missions in the game, and later on, he dodges more of Diaz's goons just to get Lance to the hospital. There goes my careful planning blown to shit. Thanks to you. You screwed up real good, Lance. He killed my brother. What do you expect me to do, mow his lawns? We're gonna have to take out that prick Diaz before he takes us out. You okay to use a gun? Sure, I guess. Nice to see you too. Let's get out of here. Now I know what people are gonna say. Lance betrays Tommy later on, so it was a way saving him. Yes, we know that, but at the end of the game, we only find it out. However, Tommy, he still did the right thing. It shows he's the better person. He heard that a friend of his was in trouble, and he went out of his way to put himself in harm's way to save Lance. Tommy could have easily left him there at the scrapyard. If he did, Lance would have died. 
Now, I know some people would say the only reason he went in to get him is because he might implicate Tommy in a plot to kill Diaz, but Diaz already figured this out, out when he caught Lance. That's why Tommy says, all my careful planning wasted. Additionally, the reaction that Tommy displayed when Kent Paul told him Lance was kidnapped, it was more of a concern for a friend of what, about what's going to happen to him instead of trying to save himself. He wanted to save Lance, despite how much of a scumbag Lance turned out to be. Tommy did do the right thing and proved he was the better person. Next at number two, we have Saving Love Fist from the Psycho Stalker. Tommy gets a phone call from Kent Paul about halfway through the game, telling him about how he's with Love Fist, and he wants him to stop by. Tommy, son, have I got a surprise for you? I'm down at recording studios with some major artists. Why don't you pass a visit? You know it makes sense, don't ya? See you later. Tommy meets Love Fist and does some errands for them, but then it's in the second mission when Love Fist are freaking out about the stalker. Tommy, man, am I glad to see you. What's going on? Bad vibes, Tommy. I am no joking again. It is heavy stuff, man. Heavy gang. This cat, we hardly know him, but he knows us. Like this cat, knows all about us. Knows that Willie likes his ladies' underwear, eh? Or that Percy likes Duran Duran. Shut up, you fool. Just eh? get jazz bomb yes. sheep. It's a love rocket thing, can. Wait, <laughs> shut yeah, up. Yeah, a love rocket <laughs> thing, right? But listen, this cat. The, the guy wants Love Fist dead. Dead, Tommy. Love Fist, gone. You know what they say, the good die young, but Tommy, you've got to save Love We've Fist. We've got a signing in two hours, and I think... Yeah, and the boys think the stalker's going to try some monkey business there. Now, the stalker's name in-game is actually the Psycho. That's actually what he's called, the Psycho. Tommy drives over in Love Fist's limo to a fan signing to see if it'll draw him out, and he does show up. I'll see Love Fist burn! Love Fist ruined my life! Now it's unknown exactly why the stalker is out to get Love Fist. He says they ruined his life, and he does have a Scottish accent. So he is from the same part of the UK as Love Fist, or he just might be so crazy that he's faking the accent. Anyways, Tommy takes him down and everything seems fine, but it turns out that he actually somehow survived. Man, that psycho's back! What's going on? That psycho won't leave Love Fist alone! You didn't you kill him, man! And now he's back! Yeah, 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 the thing is... The thing is, we need someone to drive the limo we can trust, because that nutter keeps making threats! Shut shell me, I need my mom! We're all breaking ourselves, man! Okay, guys, calm down, I'll handle this. Normally, I wouldn't busy myself with driving around a bunch of drunken Scottish bisexuals. But in your case, I'll make an exception. Last man, time for a well earned drink. Are you finished? She's a hundred yards to the road, man. Better make it a large one then. Hey, Tommy, change the tunes, man. I get all confused if my head's not banging. Ah, oh, look, what's this? Hey, Tommy, take this tape on. No fist. Your time polluting the airwaves is over. I gave you the chance to be friends. Well, now I'm giving you the chance to die. You try and slow down, your limousine will explode along with your big airy asses. Tommy focuses on keeping the limo at top speed without crashing, and Tommy at this point doesn't even care about dying anymore. He just had enough of this crap, which is really funny. Tommy, pal, you've got to save the band. I'm getting bored of this. Just keep the pedal to the metal. You gotta find it, Bob. Can't we just drive around all day? I would get plenty to drink. The bomb may be in the engine. We need to stop to get. We're all going to die. I'm going to get pushed. Hey, there's a queue here, pal. Hey, man, I'm just near the drinks cabinet. Get him away. Hey, the vodka bottle's got wires coming out here. That's no vodka. That's boomshine. Ah! Ah! Why have to blow? Ah! You always said the drink would kill me. I've seen this on the telly. You got to pull out one of the wires. Which wire? I don't know, man. I don't have a clue. Boy, she show me. I'm going to play bass in hell. Tommy, man, keep driving fast, pal. Somebody do something. I clever. Somebody do something for kind of crap he's at. I've seen braver quines. Okay, tough guy, you do something. 
boot me. I play a musical instrument. I play a cool little bit more disposal. Well, he could just suck the boom shine out with a straw. I have heard that you're good at that kind of thing. Uh, hey, I was off my tits that night as well, you know. Just pass Willie a straw. I a straw? This is a love face to a bus. What am I going to get a straw fake if I mean? Which wire, Tommy? The green one. There isn't a green one. Oh, 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 is this a green one? Any of these wires look green to you? Oh, net and death in the cards, oh, it looks green. I should have dumped you a lot when I had the chance, man. Glory seeker. Capitalist! I've been carrying you for years. Shut up, you muppet. Big screaming girl. Aye, shut it and pull a wire. Which wire? This one. No. Man, we're OK. We ain't been blown up. Tell me my nice one. Rock and roll, man. And we got a gig to go to. A racket to make groupies to abuse. Oh, fast. Oh, fast. Oh, fast. Have you finished with our bow? Tommy does keep the limo at top speed, enough for Love Fist to disarm the bomb, and they are able to perform safely at their concert. It's unknown what happened to the Psycho after this, he doesn't try anything after this. Love Fist, they are one of the few characters in the GTA game that aren't really criminals. At most, the only crime they have committed is buying and using drugs, and Tommy just saved his rock band from a gruesome death. And it did. We thought we'd show you our uh, temple of rock. <laughs> yeah, feel for the love of this three. Listen to yourself, man. It's paper mashing gravity. Hey, to the kids, it's a temple, and we are the priests. I will. As the kids like the priests have cut and thrown dead, the man they are you. Oh, I did get chewed up again. This way, we'll never get a play alive. Oh, shit. I record your I went dead, so uh, thanks again, Tommy. Give up, see a nice one. Bye. Before I reveal the number one good and honorable thing that Tommy did, I want to make a few special mentions. Special mention number one is not killing Mike. Now, Mike, this is one of Diaz's bodyguards. He appears with Diaz firstly in the party, and then also appears in the mission to chase. He later joins the Versetti gang after Diaz's downfall. Now, the reason I say it's a good thing that Tommy didn't kill him is because Tommy gave him a job working for him, but despite Mike messing up severely, Tommy still does not go after him or doesn't kill him. Now, how does Mike mess up? The first time that Mike messes up is he doesn't do anything, um... He just sits in the bar and just drinks when he was actually supposed to be out collecting protection money from stores. The second time Mike messes up, it's much more severe. And the, the timer must have got screwed. That place was wired to go up like a firework factory. And somebody tipped off the cops, but everything What's the problem, apart. fellas? Mike was supposed to torch some place in the mall, but he screwed the fuses, and now oh, yeah, the cops are crawling all over it. We gotta get our stuff and get out of here. Relax, both of you. Let me think for a second. So Mike was supposed to torch a store in the mall that was not paying protection money, but he messed up the fuses and then the store was crawling with police. And the police, it was only a matter of time until they were going to trace the explosives back to the Versetti gang. So even though Mike messed up really badly here, Tommy still didn't kill him. Most other bosses would have killed Mike at this point. Special mention number two is killing Gonzalez. Tommy kills Gonzalez in the mission Treacherous Swine, an early mission in the story in GTA Vice City. Now, Gonzalez was Colonel Cortez's second in command. He was responsible for helping Colonel Cortez gather information and organize deals. Now, from Vice City stories, we know that Gonzalez was actually a mole. He was feeding information directly to Ricardo Diaz, spying on Cortez, and giving information about his deals to Diaz. He gave the information about the Ferrelli and Vance brother deal to Diaz, and Diaz ambushed this. This got Vic Vance killed. And if you played Vice City stories, this is very, very important because Vic saved Gonzalez's life. And not only that, he told Gonzalez that I don't care who you betray as long as it's not me. But Gonzalez didn't care, and he still screwed over Vic and got Vic Vance killed. So when Tommy killed Gonzalez, not only did he kill the guy that was responsible for messing up his deal, but he also unknowingly avenged Vic Vance. And when you play this the first time, you kind of feel bad for Gonzalez. But if you know Gonzalez's entire backstory, you know what an absolute scumbag he is and that he deserved it. Oh, sweet Jesus! I've wasted my life and my looks! 
stand still and I'll make it quick. I'll pay you double, dummy. Double. But you're squealing. No one cares, Pat, so. <laughs> And number one, the number one good and honorable thing Tommy did was never betray Lance. Now hear me out on this one. Let's take a look at the cutscene first. But as much as I love them, I don't want to sleep with them, okay? But right now, your Italian brothers are coming from up there to fit me with some cement shoes, and I- Shut up, Ken! Sit down! Lance, what the hell's going on? It's your friends up north, Tommy. They ain't too happy you kept their man. They're coming down to see the business today. They took longer than I thought. Guys, we gotta make this final. We gotta leave no doubt that this is my operation. Mine! Ken, you get the first one to counterfeit cash and put 20 mil in briefcases. Lance, you get the guys together. Tommy! Why? No big hugs for your old buddy. I've had 15 years out of the loop. I'm a bit rusty <laughs> on family etiquette. Oh, he's angry, huh, Tommy? Didn't I say your temper would get you into trouble, huh? There's three mil in the cases. How many was it? Ten? No, eleven men. That's how you get to be called the Howard Butcher. <laughs> you sent me to kill one man. One man! They hey, knew Tommy, I was coming, son. Tommy! Watch your tone. Anyone would think you blame me for that unfortunate set of circumstances. Just take the money. Get the damn cash. You know, Tommy, I did what I could for you. I pulled strings, called in favors. I was your friend, Tommy. I hoped you'd see sense, see what's good for business. I trusted you, Tommy, and you disappointed me. But at least someone in your chicken shit organization knows how to do business. Isn't that right, Lance? I'm sorry, Tommy. This is Vice City. This is business. <laughs> you sold us out. No. I sold you out, Tommy. I sold you out. The real cash is upstairs in the safe. So, Tommy, what was the big plan? You think I'd just take the fake cash, save face, and run away with my tail between my legs? No. I just wanted to piss you off before I kill you. A lot of people are going to tell me, but Lance betrays Tommy. Yes, he does, and he deserves his fate. But Tommy was honorable here because he was the better person. Tommy had several opportunities to get rid of Lance throughout the story, but he never took them. For example, Lance ruined his plan and attacked Diaz's businesses. Tommy could have just left him there to die, but instead went to go save him. When Tommy got rid of Diaz, he made Lance his underboss and gave him several opportunities. Lance does nothing but just sit at a bar, and he gets intimidated by a bar owner, and then he doesn't do anything. What's the problem? Some bars refusing to pay. They reckon they're protected by a local gang of thugs. But don't worry, Tommy. I can handle it. You call this handling it? You two, off your asses. Let's go. Tommy gives Lance an attitude, but for good reason. He wasn't doing his job. Then he calls Tommy up and yells at him over it, getting all dramatic. Tommy, we gotta talk about stuff. What's the problem, Lance? It's you, my friend. I feel you're not giving me a fair slice. And more than that, you've been embarrassing me in front of the boys. I can't have that. Lance, it ain't like that. You've been making mistakes. Hey, Tommy, I'm not your message boy. I'm not your running boy. Lance, don't screw up and we won't have any problems. I screw up, you can lay into me anytime. Tommy! i done everything for you. You treat me like a fool. Don't do that. Lance, I won't rip you off or stab you in the back, okay? No, Just take you. it easy. This is tough enough without you getting all emotional on me. Trust me. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? I hear you, Tommy. But I can't take this much more. Lance, don't be like this. Now I'm warning you. Do you hear me? Just relax. Take a few days off, okay? I'll talk to you. But did you guys notice something about that call? Tommy wasn't angry at Lance for snapping at him. He told Lance to cool off and told him he was simply making mistakes. Tommy even suggested to him that if he messes up, Lance can yell at him whenever he messes up. 
Tommy was being very reasonable here, and told Lance he's not gonna stab him in the back or rip him off. It's because Tommy experienced betrayal himself firsthand when Sonny Ferrelli betrayed him 15 years ago. Tommy fought Lance as his friend. Even after Lance's second freakout, Tommy never screws him over. Tommy, it's me, Lance. Keep your mouth shut there, Tommy, because I ain't got no time to talk. I ain't interested in what you gotta say. Why should I be? You don't care about me, do you? You gotta look after me a bit better. Give me a fair slice, you know? Hey, hey, Tommy, man, look, hey, I'm sorry. It's just that people patronize me all my life, treat me like a little kid. My brother would do that. Please, man, don't do that. Today, man. I gotta go. Tommy could have left Lance the scrapyard to die, but saved him. He could have gotten rid of him for not doing anything to help the protect protection racket operation. He could have also got rid of him after Lance promised back up to Tommy, but was when Tommy was stealing the plates. All right, the courier's moving the plate from the docks today. I'm gonna go intercept them, grab the plates, lose any heat, and make my way back here. Now, depending how well this goes, we may have five minutes to print the money before the counterfeit syndicate finds us, or we may have all year. Either way, I want green rolling off the presses five minutes after I get back. Got it? Don't you worry, Tommy. We'll be ready. Me and the boys will be around in the neighborhood in case you need any heat taken care of. All right, everybody cool? All right, I'll catch you later. Though I'm starting to believe the reason he didn't provide Tommy with backup here is not because of incompetence, but because he was trying directly to get Tommy killed. Tommy put a, lot of, put a lot of trust into Lance, and put him in charge of security. Tommy didn't kill Lance, even after he left the businesses unguarded when they were being extorted by the Ferrellis. The point that I'm making is Tommy was as reasonable and as nice as possible he could be to Lance, but so many people believe that Tommy being rude to Lance caused his betrayal. It's simply because Lance is a scumbag. I will, have, I will have a video discussing on why he betrayed Tommy in the future, but Tommy yelling at him is not the cause. It's really sad because Tommy honestly believed Lance was his friend, but he turned out to be a traitor instead. Just listen to his call to Ernest. Tommy, it's Ernest. Ernest Kelly. Hey, how are you? I'm doing okay. I'll need a stick to walk, but I should be back at work soon enough. Good. I heard about Lance. What a little prick, huh? Yes. Never trust a man who walks the streets in his pajamas, that's what I say. Glad you killed him. I hope it was painful for the prick. I think it was. You know, I just didn't think he was like that. Tommy, for a raging lunatic, you're pretty naive. I'll be back at work soon. Teach you a thing or two about life, you hear? Take your time, Ernest. Look after yourself. It shows that Tommy was the better person, and more honorable. He had so many opportunities to get rid of Lance and stab him in the back, but despite how reasonable and honorable Tommy was towards Lance, and how much Tommy helped out Lance, even saving his life, Lance has decided to screw him over. Pretty unfortunate. But that's my list for the top 5 good and honorable things that Tommy Versetti did. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do, do drop a like. I want to make more lore videos like this in the future, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.